We all love Excel. It's so powerful. Until it's not. And then you hit Excel overload. But don't worry, NiFi can help. How can Apache NiFi help? So imagine you have multiple Excel files that are edited by multiple users in the same time that even they don't know who's editing what. What if we can have Apache NiFi to read the data from Excel every time a change happens and then have that data exposed to a, a database in the backend such as MySQL? Wouldn't that be interesting? and powerful in the same time. In this tutorial, we're gonna see how we can automate Excel spreadsheet data being extracted and imported into a MySQL database. Before we start building, download the code from the repo. So there you'll have all the all the required template and information. We have the template that we're going to use in this example, parameter context that we're going to use. We also have the SQL DDL where that, that we're going to use to create the tables and we have the Excel data. The first thing you want to do, you down, drag the template button, choose your Excel extract to my SQL template. If you don't know how and you haven't seen my previous uh, two videos on how you can work with Excel, make sure you go back and revisit them. There you will have the information of where you can get all these templates. Great, the template was imported. Let's jump into it and the first thing we want to do, we want to set in the configuration, the parameter context. Again, if you don't know how to import it, revisit the previous tutorial and follow the link in the description. Uh, let's apply it. So right now we have all of the components up and running. We can see here we have some issues with the record reader and record writer. The reason is that this particular template has a record reader and a record writer. We are reading CSV data and then we write it as JSON. So let's go ahead. Actually, before we get to this point, let's go and explain what we're doing here. We're listing the files in the source directory and we have a file list that both of these parameters are configured into our parameter context. So we have the list file and the source directory. Make sure you change the source directory to fit your use case and it's not the same as mine. And then we have the fetch file processor, fetch file processor, and then we have convert Excel to CSV. The only change we do is the CSV format. We choose Excel, Microsoft Excel out of the drop down list and the rest stays the same. Following that, we're gonna convert the incoming CSV file into a JSON. The easiest way to do it is to have a record reader and a record writer. Now, if you're gonna go to navigate to this CSV record reader, this is a controller that at the moment is disabled because we've imported this template. But let's go into its definition and let's, let's see how do we set it. So what do we wanna do here? The schema access strategy it's in first schema. Basically, he will look into that uh, CSV file and will evaluate the file, including the header, and he will come up with our schema. The CSV parser, we want it to be a common CSV, knowing that it's a comma separated CSV. So we don't have to deal with more than that. The CSV format here, choose Microsoft Excel, which works hand in hand with the output of the previous uh, processor, and the rest stays the same. Let's apply and enable. Gonna close this one and we go and go back to convert record. We see that we have a record writer. So we're getting CSV and we're writing JSON. This JSON record set writer, it's disabled at the moment. Let's go and see its configuration. Capture the incoming average schema and set it to average schema attribute. The schema access strategy, it's inherit record schema. Let's apply, enable. Let's close. We can see right now the convert record, it's in valid state. Next step, we have the convert JSON to SQL. If we click on the controller and we follow it, we can see that it is created. It just needs to be enabled. And here as well, we have all the parameter context uh, uh, values. If you remember, I put the link in the description and you can follow the link that just popped up on your screen, how you can connect to a database and how you can use parameter context to fill in all the configuration information. Close. And now we see that the put SQL, it's in valid state along with the convert JSON to SQL. So what does convert JSON to SQL do? 
basically he will convert incoming JSON payloads to SQL statement and we can choose here the insert statement and the table name what I did in this case um, I've used the, the incoming file name uh, to be designated the table name and the catalog name is the database name that we have it in the parameter context and if we jump back in here uh, sorry if we go back to the convert the rest stays the same final step would be to insert uh, all the incoming records into the SQL database if we he see here the only thing we have created is the JDBC connection pool the rest stays the same because if no attributes are provided to the SQL statement this processor will assume that the flow file contains the SQL he needs to execute so let's go ahead now as the final step before we run this flow let's go and create the database object so if you remember in the github repository we have a folder called mysql ddl this particular folder contains the script that has all the definition of the database and the tables you need to create if you have a different structure that you want to follow for example you have a different excel files with different columns then you need to make changes to this file accordingly let's copy this and let's create the object i'm going to connect to my mysql which is my local install and let's paste the script in and run the script if we're going to refresh the schema we can see that we have our database created and the tables let's go back to our nifi and let's extract the data and what i'll do here i'll do a step by step so you guys could understand and what happens first we're going to list the files in that particular folder so let's start this processor run the fetch file run the convert excel to csv you can see we have the data in and now now if we're going to look at the data and see how it looks um let's just take a quick snip as you can see it's a csv with a with a, with a header let's see what comes the other side of the convert record so if we're going to go into the attributes remember we put that avro schema to be pushed into our attributes so this is what you get for the avro schema the definition of that particular payload and if we're going to look into it we can see it's a json file we're going to take that JSON and transform it into insert SQL statements. So let's observe what happened here. Basically, it generates an insert statement, insert into a schema and the user columns and the values. And see, you see, we get this question mark. The reason that is, is because he he, he creates argument out of those attributes. Let's execute the puts SQL. All the records were inserted with success, nothing on failure. Let's review the database now. <clears throat> so if we run again the select start from cars, we can see we have the records that we have in the Excel sheet. So if we look at the cars, we have these two. If we look at the colors, let's review the colors as well and we can see we have everything there so this wraps up our tutorial on how we can extract data from excel and push it into a mysql database this can be done with any other type of database that nifi can connect to and we have a tutorial showing you how you can pretty much connect to any database from NiFi. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you in the next tutorial.